The season of the witch is here, the final Sabbath on the Wheel of the Year, a time to imagine and remember the ancestors and past Novembers. Winter time is drawing near, the darkest time of cold and fear. But we move forward brave of heart, for every end is a brand new start. Samhain or November's Eve, a time of crunchy fallen leaves. The final harvest of the fall, a mystical season for witches all. Fall is known as shadow season by many witches and for good reason. To look at darkness as a friend and companion at the summer's end. A time to journal on our fears and heal from times we've shed our tears. To bid farewell to the cycle past, knowing it was never meant to last. A time to shed away the old, like the trees, blazing gold. To celebrate what's gone before and create space to experience more. A time to bring the witchy vibes and cast our spells to transform our lives. A time to lay the past to rest and step out in our witchy best. A time to cozy up with food that brings about the harvest mood. To whip up all the autumn snacks and listen to those spooky tracks. A time to explore the darker themes in movies, books, and our own dreams. To conjure up a witch's brew, a simmer pot, or pumpkin stew. A time to dress up and perform, to shapeshift into a different form. To make light of all the spooky things and embrace the magic the season brings. Greetings, magical mavens, and welcome to this November's Eve slash Halloween slash Samhain bucket list. So if you're new around here on this channel, I like to look at the Wheel of the Year Sabbaths not just as eight specific days on the calendar when we have to celebrate, but actually I like to look at it as splitting the whole year into eight seasons that are six weeks long. This gives us permission to not try to cram all of our magicalness into just these eight specific days or even just that weekend or that week. It gives us permission to actually incorporate the themes of that season into our everyday lives for that entire six weeks surrounding the season. And it also just gives us the opportunity to experience more mindfulness and more magic in our everyday lives. So of course, being the writing witch, tip number one in this series is always to do your seasonal journaling. For each of the eight Sabbaths on the Wheel of the Year, I like to look at three different journal prompts that help us to embody the most important themes of that season into our everyday lives. The three themes I like to focus most on this time of year are ancestors, darkness, and death. Pretty serious sounding subjects, I know, but for me, part of being a witch is learning to embrace the full cycle of the human experience, and this time of year is an invitation to lean into that sense of balance in approachable and festive ways. Now in this video, we're just going to be lightly touching on some of my favorite fun traditions for the season, but for a much deeper dive into these themes and how to incorporate them into both the magical and the mundane aspects of your everyday life this season so that you can experience more joy and fulfillment, I invite you to check out the video that I did last year, which will pop up on the end screen at the end of this video. And of course, you're also invited to join me and my community of writing witches over in the Writing Witch Coven, where we're doing our late fall seasonal living challenge right now to support each other in embodying these themes in whatever ways feel most empowering for each of us as individuals. Your membership will also include access to physical and digital copies of these gorgeous information sheets and grimoire prompt pages that I've designed for you. To learn more about that, check out the link that's on the screen right now, which will also be linked down below. The next tip is to do your shadow work and or any banishing rituals. So the age old question, what actually is shadow work? In the witchy spiritual and personal development communities, you've probably heard this term being thrown around, but oftentimes it isn't clear what exactly it means. Shadow work refers to the process of exploring and integrating the unconscious or repressed aspects of ourselves. It involves delving into the darker, less desirable parts of our psyche, such as our fears, traumas, and unresolved emotions. By shining a light on these hidden aspects, we can gain a deeper understanding of ourselves and ultimately achieve personal growth and transformation. 
It's actually a term that originates not from the spiritual community, but actually from Jungian psychology. But witches love it because it's one of those lovely instances of where science finally is able to explain something that we've been intuitively aware of. There are many, many ways to do shadow work, and a shadow work practice can look totally different from one person to another. But again, being the writing witch, journaling is always my favorite go-to technique. Your shadow work journaling practice can be as simple or as complex as feels good for you. The simplest way that I've found is by simply doing a practice called automatic writing. This is where you set a timer and jot down everything and anything that comes to mind around any subject that triggers you. The key to automatic writing is to not pause your writing, to correct your spelling, to carefully choose your words, or to censor yourself in any way. You want to bypass the critical conscious mind and allow the subconscious or the ego to express openly. Once your timer is stopped, you can read over what you've written and do a little self-analysis. Sometimes something will come up that surprises you. Other times, it'll simply be putting into words something that you're already aware that you've been thinking or feeling. Either way, you now have the power of clarity and can decide what to do with that information. In many cases, just shining a light of awareness on a shadow or a trigger will allow it to easily dissipate on its own. Other times, you'll need to do some additional shadow work to release the tension around any subject that is still triggering you. This can look like going to traditional therapy, which I don't think is just for crazy people. We're all a little bit crazy and we can all use some therapy. But this can also look like simply writing affirmations that are the opposite of any negative self-talk, for example. Or it can be learning techniques like the emotional freedom technique, also known as tapping. I made a video a while back on tapping with a tapping expert. So I invite you to check out that video after this one if you're curious to learn more. I also recently wrote an in-depth article on lots of different techniques to simply incorporate shadow work into your life, both in more sort of serious self-help ways, as well as in more fun and expressive ways. And you can find that article in the Starlight Magazine, which will be linked on the screen right now and will also be linked down below. The next tip is to do some pumpkin magic. Pumpkins and pumpkin spice have become universal symbols for the autumn season. And unless you're one of those people who are anti-pumpkin everything, we can kind of all embrace the magic of pumpkins in our spiritual practices. Last fall, I did an entire video going into depth on the meaning and symbolism of the pumpkin and how you can work with it in a way that resonates with you in a personally meaningful way. But for a quick tip, you can totally just draw or carve a symbol into a pumpkin that represents your intentions for the season or the year ahead. Since pumpkins represent abundance, prosperity, and stability to me, I've done spells in the past where I drew a sigil related to my desires in those areas on a pumpkin. I like to use the sigil creation technique where I start by writing out a sentence to state my intention, and then I use the shapes of the letters to create a symbol that feels energetically representative of the sentiment. But for a super simple spell for prosperity, protection, and balance in all areas of life, you can just simply draw or carve the symbol of a pentagram or a pentacle. It represents the balance of all five elements, earth, air, fire, water, and spirit. These are the alchemical building blocks of our reality, both internally and in the world around us. And you can learn more about how to balance them for self-empowerment in the video that's linked on the screen now. And interestingly enough, the spices that make up pumpkin spice have powerful magical correspondences similar to that of the pumpkin itself. You can simply do a little magic with your morning coffee by stirring intention into it with awareness of the plant magic that's in your cup. I've also made a full video on this, which will be linked on the screen or down below if I've already run out of links to put on the screen. The next tip is of course to decorate an altar for the season or go all out and make your entire home into a decorative altar of sorts. If you've seen any of my videos, you know that decorating is one of the biggest ways that I personally like to celebrate the seasons. I like to go all out with an altar setup, an elaborate tablescape, and a Sabbath-themed Christmas tree that I update with new decor every six weeks. But if you're in the broom closet or you just don't have the time, space, or desire to decorate your whole house, 
even doing something as simple as just putting up a different wreath on the door or getting a seasonal bouquet of flowers is enough to give you the psychological trigger that the season has changed and that it's something to rejoice in and savor for the short time that it's here. It's a magical way of romanticizing your life and celebrating where you are on the journey of life. If you're a decorating junkie like me, I recently made a cozy autumn witchy vlog where we did the decorating together. So I invite you to join me for that one if you're still in the mood for more cozy witchy vibes after this video. The next tip is to eat squash and or root vegetables. Hardy fall crops like squashes and root vegetables have a long history of keeping our ancestors fed and healthy over the winters. Before we had food preservation technology, humans had to rely on natural food sources that had the capacity to stay fresh for long periods of time. Winter squashes like pumpkins and butternut squash, as well as root vegetables like potatoes, carrots, and beets can stay good for several months when kept in cool, dry conditions. Back in the olden days, our ancestors would have to keep these resources in a root cellar or buried in pots in the ground to ensure their longevity. As a way to honor our ancestors, as well as the earth herself, I like to make an abundance ritual in the form of a mindful meal. It's a similar statement to the practice of celebrating Thanksgiving with these types of foods. When the days start to get crisp and cool, I love to do a little witching in the kitchen. Have you ever tried making an intuitive soup or stew? It is so much fun. You get to feel like a witch cackling over your cauldron. All you have to do is start by boiling a pot of water and then go around your kitchen, pantry, and or garden collecting ingredients that would taste good together and would contribute to the vibe of coziness, prosperity, and gratitude. Bonus points if it includes any seasonal produce, things you grew or harvested yourself, or anything that has ancestral or magical connotations for you. Keep your mind on themes of gratitude and abundance, and maybe even bring in music or play a movie in the background that evokes the desired feelings as you cook. You can directly program the soup with your intention by chanting your incantations or mantras or power words over it. I like to say a spell while stirring the stew clockwise to represent moving my intentions forward. I also draw the shape of a pentacle with a spoon to represent wholeness and balance. I'll also note here that if you're a meat eater, meats, especially beef, are traditionally used this time of year. It's said that the Celts would kill some of their livestock at the Festival of Samhain, both to make hearty food available and to have less animals to feed during the months when resources would be scarce. I don't eat meat personally, so the hearty veg are the way to go for me, but feel free to make a meat stew if that's something that's aligned with your personal spiritual path. Preferably meat that comes from animals who were hunted fairly or were treated well, rather than from factory farms. This is a way to honor and respect Mother Earth and the other creatures we share our planet with. The next tip is to put your garden to bed or rake leaves or do any sort of outdoor activity that helps you to feel like you're preparing your home for the winter season. It's also an opportunity to get outside and feel that crisp air one last time before starting to go into hibernation if you're anything like me and you live in a very cold climate. Since gardening and composting are big parts of my practice as a green witch, this late fall season represents the time of putting the garden to bed, so to say. It involves getting hands-on with harvesting the last of the crops and returning any leftover plant matter or soil to the compost pile along with some fallen leaves. This is the literal manifestation of the compost phase of what we call the plant tend harvest compost cycle that we see reflected in nature and in our own lives. As I'm returning these natural materials to the earth to be transformed into new food for future plants, I'm also reflecting on anything that's being put to rest in my own life. This year, I'm actually moving house, so there's a real sense of closing one chapter and transmuting past challenges into fertile soil for the new life that I'm creating. The next tip is to do a divination ritual, preferably by candlelight. Halloween time is traditionally a season of divination, where people seek to connect with the spiritual realm and gain insights into the future. From ancient practices like bobbing for apples to modern tarot card readings, these divination rituals add an element of mystery and excitement to the Halloween festivities. 
Whether it's doing a tarot card reading for the year ahead, using your pendulum to speak to a spiritual archetype, or even trying your hand at traditional apple peel divination from the Victorian era, Halloween offers a unique opportunity to explore the mystical side of life and embrace the unknown. Now, personally, I tend to do rituals that are mainly intuitive and are focused on tapping into my own higher self, but if you want to get super spooky with it and try some other types of magic where maybe you're connecting with spirits or attempting to predict the future, if that's your cup of tea, I highly recommend doing a YouTube search or a Google search on traditional Samhain and Halloween divination and see if you find something fun that sparks your interest. And if you're not into doing divination for yourself, either because you don't know how or because you just prefer an outside perspective, it's also a really good time this season to get a divination reading from a trusted community member. I happen to offer tarot card readings in a variety of different styles to help you get the answers that you're looking for at this particular transitional moment in your life. If that's something you would be curious about, I have linked that down below and I look forward to working with you. The next tip is to watch your favorite Halloween movies. So I mentioned in some of the other videos in this series that a lot of movies that people add to their list of favorite Halloween movies for me are actually related to totally different Sabbaths. For example, a lot of people pick Practical Magic, which yes, there is a Halloween scene at the end of it, but the vast majority of the story actually takes place around the summer solstice. And then the same thing with the movie The Craft. It actually doesn't have to do with Halloween at all and the whole thing pretty much takes place around May's Eve. But this is that time of year when it is actually time to watch Hocus Pocus or just any of those movies that are really really the Halloween vibes for me. Now I do have a video from a while back where I went into depth on a list of movies that I feel embody the themes of November's Eve slash Samhain energy for me. But here's a quick rundown of some of my favorite movies and TV shows for this time of year. Some that are super seasonal, and others that are more vaguely related to the themes of the season. Some that I really love, and others that I think are at least worth watching once. If you want me to go into depth on these, let me know in the comments, but for right now, here is just a simple list. For movies, The Crow, Interview with the Vampire, Queen of the Damned, The Picture of Dorian Gray, The Lost Boys, Death Becomes Her, The Ninth Gate, Hocus Pocus, of course, Halloween Town, Sleepy Hollow, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, The Worst Witch from the 80s, Harry Potter, obviously, The Nightmare Before Christmas, The Wicker Man, and I Married a Witch. For TV, The Good Witch, Witches of East End, Sleepy Hollow, A Discovery of Witches, Charmed, the original version, but the new version isn't bad. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Once Upon a Time, The Worst Witch from the 2000s, Vampire Diaries, The Originals, and True Blood. I'm probably going to think of a ton more as soon as I'm done uploading this video, but oh well. What are some of your favorite movies to watch during this time of year? Whether it be something that I've heard of, we can relate about that, or if it's something that I haven't heard of that I need to check out, please post your faves in the comments. The next tip is to wear a costume. Whether or not you're gonna be going to a Halloween party or going trick-or-treating with your kids, which I don't have kids, and for the past several years, I haven't actually gone to any Halloween parties, but it's still a value of mine to embrace that sort of magical, wearing a disguise trickster type of energy of this season, even if it's just to watch movies with my sister or literally just to do like a fun photo shoot or something. Getting dressed up for Halloween is not just for kids and it's not even just for people with social lives. My next favorite thing to do this time of year is to watch spooky documentaries. I am not the biggest like spooky witch. I'm more of a balanced witch where I take inspiration from both the darkness and the light. But when I am going to get into some like weird documentaries about like vampires and zombies and whatever other like weird creepy subjects are out there, I always find myself doing that this time of year. I kind of really get into it and then I get it out of my system and then by the time the winter solstice season is rolling around, I've like had my fill of it for the year. 
So to take an even deeper dive into my three favorite themes to embody this time of year, I invite you to check out this video right here, which I did last year, where I'm not only sharing with you my three favorite journal prompts for this season and some practical tips on how to embody those themes into your everyday life, but I'm also actually answering the journal prompts in the video. So you get to see what it looks like to take these themes and live your life by them in real life with whatever is actually going on for you at the time. So I invite you to check that one out and I will see you over there.